What is up here in my abandoned laboratory outside in the room in the garage? This is where my controller is for my heat pump to heat the water. And guess what? It's been fine for a long time, but lately over this last week, I've been finding it in this state where it turned on the uh, heating. And it says, you know, so my temperature pump off to increase heats because it's not making any heat. It's because this relay for the compressor is not turning on. So the way it works is this board has 12 volts. It's 11.9 from that board up there. And then input four, I guess, is going to be. I'm trying to do this one-handed, but that's input four should have five volts. It's the bottom. Nothing. Zero. So uh, what I've been doing is just turning it off and right back on, and it uh, starts right up. So I've been cycling the power. Let me just do it by the here. I know I've done it this way before. There, anti-short cycle delay. Put the input back. Now all the input is is this little wall board makes five volts, <laughs> and this goes here and connects to the input, just the logical input. So anti-short cycle. I've got it bypass because I always do that in my code. Four, three, two, one, zero, and it always starts every time I do that. So some. I got something screwed up in the logic, which this hasn't been reprogrammed or anything. This hasn't been touched for and programmed for a good year or more, probably. It might have been a couple years or so. Yeah, 4.7 volts. So, something I'm assuming, because I touch on the board, it doesn't come on. And all I do is take, turn the logic off and back on, and it starts the next time. So there's something scrambled in that little microprocessor's brain. This is an old build about four or five years ago. Remember I tried to change it to a, use one of the other boards and the newer processors and then I wound up just sticking this back in there and it's been fine. <laughs> so now my challenge is I gotta go find if I even have the pro where my program is and so I can hopefully go program another chip and just drop it in here. I think I have another 16F690 which is what this is based on, the microchip. If not, I should be able to get my laptop and plug it into this header pin and read the ROM <laughs> if that's not corrupted and put that in another chip if it's if it's the uh, you know something in the hardware inside the chip that's messed up but not the, the ROM that's dumped in there yeah the memory program memory we'll see it so I gotta start digging had that doesn't just kind of I mean, this thing is, I've kind of reinvented the wheel a few times with it, and it's been just left like this mess, but it just works. It just works. And it's been heating my water heater off of solar power for a while now, for almost all of its life since I put it in. Yep, so let's go see what I can find. Oh, also, um, the weather, since it's been subsiding a little bit, this thing's always been pretty much topped off by the time I get home and earlier when I got home, it was pretty much hard to put any of the batteries to where it wasn't even pulling as much power as it had available out of the solar. So 1.6 kilowatts. So it's actually, now that it's 430 and the sun angles a lot further down now, it's actually getting all it can from the solar, which was 1600 at this point, and tapping a little bit off the batteries to run the heat pump and the outside AC unit. First stage cooling looks like it's active on the upstairs unit. Well, I just had my laptop opened and I heard the compressor quit. So this thing might be more messed up than I thought. Yeah. It, I, when I walked in there, it didn't say anything about, you know, high temp or open pressure switch or anything. And the temperature of the liquid line always corresponds to the pressure, so that wasn't an issue. So I think this thing's just going into a funk. So maybe it's, it's stopping while it's running, but I don't think there's anything wrong with the board. I mean, it just absolutely has no voltage coming out that freaking thing. Huh. So weird. And, uh, flip the power off. So far, when I've just reset it and walked away, I've always had, when I came back, this thing was heated up all the way. But whenever I catch it, not heated, it's just st st stuck there, saying that it should be running. See, there it goes. It turned that on. Hmm. Hopefully, it's just a chip. So if I find my program, I just program another one. 
Other than that, I gotta build another board. That suck. And right out here is where I have my laptop still, sitting next to all this stuff I don't hardly ever use anymore. But I bounce between projects. So here's the last thing I had open on here. Uh, it's for my slim heat pump out there. This is the program. This is probably it. <laughs> it's because it's a long program. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Huh. I think this is it. Uh, 690 water heater heat pump controller. It looks like it might be it. Here's all my defines. Here's all my variables. And then I kind of go down here. And this function is my thermistor reading. Kind of refresh my memory on what I was doing here. So reading the defrost temp. I have one called defrost, one called uh, liquid, but this one's really just a suction line temp. So analog, digital converter, hexadecimal number nine was analog channel two on that chip. So I'm reading that. Then I'm uh, converting that uh, to the variable defrost from the high bit. I byte, I mean, of the analog digital register high byte to, calc to convert it over to uh, degrees Fahrenheit. I get within a degree or so just using a kind of a equation I use, I'm not using a lookup table or anything. So that was, it says yeah, two there. At least I think that's two. I notice I have the same remark here. I must not have changed it. This is the uh, liquid line temp. Hexadecimal D. Sometimes I'll just forget to change these right here. So <laughs> both of these aren't channel two, it's something else. So I'm reading that into the uh, liquid line temp, converting and everything and printing it to the screen. You know, that's how it's going. I uh, got the function for high pressure. If it hits that, it's going to do that. And then uh, change change some variables and it's going to go over to the anti-short cycle. You know, once it, whenever it turns the compressor off and everything, it starts that. Here's a function for when I start the compressor. I do this like a couple second countdown. I like doing that. It's been a while. Compressor shut down. That's where, in, in this function, it actually counts down this, is where it also counts down that anti short cycles. So you notice the display just keeps down, counting down that display. But I have this, this little secret weapon in here. If I push those two buttons, <laughs> grounding them basically so the input becomes zero, then it knows that I'm, it's going to like change it to four seconds. I don't see that in here where I do this. So hopefully it's the right one. I just see it, the value equals zero bypassed. Huh, this might not be the most current one if that's the case. Pump control. So if it goes above, liquid temperature goes above my high setting, then I'm going to run the pump at full speed, basically. If it's kind of not, but it's above the low setting, then we run the speed one. And then basically, um, if it's below, you know, the... Uh, low setting with a two degree differential, then it's basically zero pump modes off. And I kind of show all that kind of stuff down in here. Everything else seems to be what my unit does. Well, here's my function for temp calculation, I think. And nope, that's just sending it up to that one for this function. Oh, when I'm in defrost, yep. Anyway, heater override, I never really implemented that, but it was, supposed to, it was gonna be able to turn on if it needed to defrost, it was going to kick on uh, the electric heater. If it, I think I had a timer in there where if it didn't defrost within a certain amount of time, it would go ahead and turn the heater on. The, that's the electric heat inside the water heater. Never needed to use that. Not once I put this high wall in here. It just, it just doesn't freeze up getting heat from my garage now. It did freeze up when it was outside, though, with all the humidity in the winter and everything. Test heater. I used to have a function for that. I don't remember how half. I don't remember using half this crap. There's my adjust subroutine, so I could go into a menu and like set my uh, diff my set points for the pump. You know when it switches speeds and everything. And here's like the main the main mode checks all the modes that it's in and kind of bounces it to all the those functions that were above. So I mean, kind of seems like this is one that works. <laughs> but I don't think it's, I don't know if it's my last one. I'm going to I'm gonna have to look a little bit off. I'm not distracted with the camera, but see if, uh, see if I find any other ones. Well, this is a pain in the ass. I've never used MP Lab to uh, read a hex out of one chip just to put it into another. So I just had to like, create a new little uh, project as a pre-built. And then I was able to copy 
the hex file I did save out of the working one. So, assuming it's hardware that's messed up and not the <laughs> hard software, you know, the file that's in here, maybe this other chip will be uh, able to fix it. Because I've looked through all my files and I cannot find the version. I actually only have one version of the 690 chip from my water heater in all my files. So, it, I have the feeling that the one that's been working for a couple of years is something I programmed on the computer I had down at Hobby Room and probably was on the hard drive and it didn't actually save it to like my OneDrive, which is where I try to save my projects. So, that one's just not in there. So, anyway, let's go see if this works. Okay, there's the chip that was in here. I read the hex file, which is a program memory. I think I wrote it to this other one. And there's there. Oh, wait to stand by. That's good. Ah, yes. Okay, it's going to start. We'll just let this run and probably won't know until tomorrow or so if it, that fixed it or not. But All right, let's start it up. So I was able to back this one up and dump it into that one. And you see now it actually fired up. Shit. All right, let that go. It's the next morning. Come down here after I took a shower. Hey. She's running. So it looks like uh, harvesting the program off the one chip and putting it on the other maybe is the fix. We'll give it another day. All right, it's been several days and it has not failed again. So. Get the water back up. Over 700 watts. Yeah. Pressure's running. Sweet.